All right, welcome back, everybody. We are very, very lucky today to have a very relevant, um, I guess, person or, or a product um, to have a chat about today uh, in Nick Guthrie, who's the MZ of Anscrow. Uh, and he's given up some of his time today to, to share his story and how the last few months have been for, for himself and for Anscrow and, and how they're all getting ready for this, you know, this New Zealand Australia bubble that we all so desperately want to, to open up and, and get ready and, and get our our customers sort of traveling and, and, and moving to somewhere other than their local local states. So welcome, Nick. And, you know, no doubt there's a few people out there that know who you are and, and where you've sort of come from. But for those who don't, uh, if you wanted to give us a little bit of your backstory and your journey into the travel world and, and how you ended up sitting where you are today would be, would be a good start. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Josh. Um, so like many travel companies, um, we're a family travel business. Um, so Anscrow is, is a family business, I'm part of the family. So in a way I've been doing travel um, in some form or another for most of my life. Um, our business started uh, 20 years ago for, for Anscrow, but before that um, we're three generations in the New Zealand travel and tourism landscape. Uh, so I started with my grandfather and ran travel uh, agencies, uh, tour companies, um, you know, bus coach companies around the country. So I've been doing this for, for, for a long, long time. Um, and then I came into the business at Anscrow uh, in 2015. So I've been managing director of the company uh, since that time. So uh, along that journey, um, I would spent, uh, started off working a travel agency back in Christchurch when I left school, uh, which was corporate and leisure. So um, back then I was office junior, you know, we would, uh, they didn't let me anywhere near the phones to talk to customers or do any bookings or anything like that. Uh, I was about doing ticketing and documentation and really I remember just sort of, um, driving around town, dropping off tickets, you know, to, to our corporate clients. It was, it was sort of just before e-tickets came through. And, and so I remember just packing in the car and, and going and delivering domestic air tickets to, 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 to corporate companies. So that's kind of where I started in, in the industry and, and, and picked it up from there. Uh, and then spent, um, came over to Australia about, um, 18, 19 years ago, and uh, and spent time out of the industry. So I worked in telco and IT, and uh, that's where I really got uh, involved in the BDM and the sales side of of, uh, of an industry. You know, um, pounding the pavement, picking up the phone, knocking on doors, going visiting uh, visiting customers, and and, uh, and talking to them about a completely different industry, which was telco. But now I'm in, you know, firmly in travel and tourism and, and uh, it's definitely where I, I feel I belong and, and where I've been. And how's the, how's the last few months? I know you're, uh, you're based down there on sunny Gold Coast. Um, how's the isolation and, you know, the, just I guess the world that we've all been living in, how's that been for you? And, and I guess as well the, the, the Anscrow team and, you know, everyone based here in Australia. Yeah, it's... Um, it's been incredible the last few months, you know, just thinking back to the middle of March um, when you know, that weekend, I remember when New Zealand made the decision to close its, its borders and the travel restrictions were put in place. Quite surreal, it was on that Saturday afternoon and it just sort of took a little bit of time to digest what that actually meant and just how quickly it was going to shut everything down. Um, I started communicating to our staff immediately that night and we got together as a management group the next day. And from that moment on, mate, it's, it's, it was just a, an incredible period of um, an unravelling of, uh, you know, the tourism industry and, and, you know, dealing with travel agents and suppliers and customers and, uh, and just trying to get a sense of, of how that was was going to play out over the, into the future. So um, it's been incredible, really. It's it, a lockdown sort of started to take place around us, but as a business, we had to make some really um, really fast decisions. We, we thought about them 
and we, we realised that this was going to be a, a really major event and it could go on for a long time. So we, we made some changes within the company really early on to ensure that we were there to manage all the, the, the bookings we had in place and the forward bookings, that was a priority. Um, but then just changes around our business happened happen fairly, fairly quickly um, to make sure that we, as a company, came out the other side of this, you know, whenever that, 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 that may be. So, you know, we, we worked hard from day one to really work on the business and make sure we, we came out the other side, which is, which is what we're going to do. And as far as the team here in Australia and, and over in New Zealand, has there been some sort of, you know, reduction in work hours, days, any stand downs, those sorts of things? Yeah, so we're, we're a smaller business than we were before. Um, we have, you know, staff on, on you know, the wage keeper, job keeper in, in both Australia and New Zealand, uh, meaning that staff are on reduced hours um, in, in some areas. Uh, and that is now gradually coming back. So we're starting to see some parts of our business which are, you know, increasing the hours and just um, you know, coming back as, as inquiry and, and demand is picking up for New Zealand. Um, and then in New Zealand, so Anscro, um, for those that may not know, we, we are a wholesaler. We operate in the B2B space. And we are in uh, Australia's our head office. We've also got a business in Queenstown, which used to be in Christchurch, post-earthquake we moved down to Queenstown. And we're also in the UK. So across those three regions, um, we're kind of different stages along the timeline, which is quite interesting to you know to observe and then adjust our business, uh, our operation across those three areas. So New Zealand domestic's back on now. Um, you know, so we're we're busy there. Um, making sales again, selling travel. You know, it's incredible. It was um, a month ago, actually, it was May the, May the 14th that really domestic travel was, was opened up again. And after two months of you know, cancellations and refunds and rebook, you know, two months of that, and then to have a positive booking day was, was, uh, was, was, was a you know, really nice change. And I think you know, it's, it's good for, you know, the Australian travel agents to know that, you know, you have been able to operate in that domestic space. It's similar to we spoke to uh, the Hurdigruten guys the other day, you know, and, and really by the time uh, Aussie travellers are ready to head to Norway, that, that coastal voyage, for instance, is going to be, have been operating for the domestic passengers for, for a number of weeks and, and months even before that happens. So, you know, for, for you guys as a business, that must be something that's, um, a, a bit of a, a silver lining to know that you're able to start operating and, and start generating those bookings and get things through. And then when we're ready to go, we're not, the f it's not the first day that you're accepting bookings is the same day that a, a ton of Australian travel agents are trying to get hold of you to, to, um, to get their customers over to New Zealand for, for example. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's a, it's a good start, I guess. Yeah. I mean, the industry is so, um, so many layers, so many pieces to this industry that we work in, it would be impossible for it to just start from a cold start. So, um, you know, I think a lot about the suppliers and the operators that we deal with in New Zealand and in talking to them right through this process, um, you know, from the start where it was just so much shock and, and fear and uncertainty and they were, you know, many were unsure as to whether they were going to survive. Um, and, and so then it, for us as a, as a wholesaler, we then were thinking, well, what does our you know, the supplier landscape look like? Um, so, you know, we've, and we're still not through that, right? So our industry in New Zealand and, and in Australia as well, we can't survive on, on domestic alone and we can't survive on, on trans-Tasman alone. So, Whilst these things from uh, these developments have been a positive start, you know, we, we just need a, the borders open, long haul, you know, markets coming back in, 
tourism, um, which in New Zealand, you know, employs one in eight, in eight people. Um, but so much of that is dependent on the international markets that have been built up over the decades. So it's going to, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a slow, steady start, but it's, it, is, it is progress. Um, you know, in New Zealand, it's, it's great to see what they've been able to do with the, the health issue of the pandemic. And now from a tourism perspective, you got things happening. I was the weekend just gone, um, Mount Hutt, one of the ski fields in the South Island, opened up, which is great. They had an opening day this weekend. Um, we're starting to see some of the tourism products start to come back online. Um, you know, the hotels, the occupants are starting to pick up off those miserable bottoms that were there in, in April. Um, some of the new, some of the tourism infrastructure is, is getting some funding from government to help them through, which is fabulous. And on Whale Watch is one example um, in Paikoura. Um, so it's it's gonna, it still needs work, it still needs help. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's starting to improve. And what just uh, side topic, but just the sort of the health security side of things. Um, obviously, New Zealand have done a great job to, to reduce the number of cases and, and down to zero and, and for some time now. What's the conversation like with those sort of ground operators and, and people in New Zealand? You know, we're obviously probably not hearing it here in Australia through our, say, media. Um, what's the conversation like over there in regards to getting prepared so that, you know, no one, they don't open a border or don't let anybody in um, that may ruin all of their hard work, I guess, um, to get to where they got to. Yeah, they talk about this team of five million in New Zealand that everyone's kind of been, you know, getting towards the same goal. Um, so the, you will have seen they had their uh, alert levels in New Zealand, four, three, two and one is where they're at now. So one means no more. Social distancing, you know, pubs are open, 40,000 people are at Eden Park watching, watching rugby over the weekend, which is amazing. So the, the, that process of, of having levels allowed operators to plan accordingly. Level three, what did that mean in terms of social distancing and contact tracing and how do our staff, what training do we have to give our staff and what's the cleaning process? And then at level two, another, you know, another, a lot of planning went into that, a lot of time and effort and to get that right. Um, but now at level one, I, I, there's a huge sigh of relief from operators that are like, okay, that bit's sorted, right? In our hotel or on our cruise ship or our, you know, on our chair lifts, we know that we have the, the freedom again. Um, now we've just got to worry about it's our, Distribution look like where's our customer going to come from, and uh, and, and and hopefully a, a border to Australia or the Pacific Islands can be open again soon. So that's um, how I, I think some of the operators you know, thought really long and hard about it, and wondering how the cost to operate at certain levels was for some just going to be um, you know, not substantial. So it's good to. I guess when we, we kind of look at these situations, we kind of realise that things will change, um, you know, and things may not go back to, to any sort of normal. Some things will just get removed completely um, from, you know, uh, what's able to be done on a day-to-day -day basis. When you think about the New Zealand tourism sector in, in, a, in, a, in a whole point of view, are there any things that you can think of that are quite obvious that just won't won't necessarily be there or absolutely going to need to change moving forward. You know, even if, even if we all go to a place where, you know, there's no, no more virus or, or there's no, um, no cases for an extended period of time. You know, if we look back to the security, say after nine 11, we know that it never goes all the way back um, to, to pre, what are you thinking that the New Zealand tourism industry will look like on the other side where it may not necessarily go all the way back if that kind of makes sense. Yeah, it does. Uh, so prior to the uh, pandemic, the, there was a real undercurrent within New Zealand around the impact of tourism because of the numbers, uh, because of the tourism numbers across the country. Uh, there was, you know, they talk about the social licence and New Zealanders 
perhaps didn't have an, an, a real true understanding of what tourism was doing. They saw tourists throughout the country, and in summertime, the roads were very busy, the motorhomes were out everywhere, the coaches were, you know, in front of the sightseeing guests were looking at the, the you know, in front of the lakes and so forth. So they saw the numbers of tourists there, but weren't really fully under uh, appreciating the economic impact that those visitors were delivering. So the industry itself was trying to think through what are some of the ways we might be able to have a healthier balance between the number of visitors and the impact on the local um, the, the, the local areas. So I think as we come through that, that shift has just now happened. That's a bang. That's a wall that we've all hit. And it's like, okay, now um, we look, I actually look at it and I go, well, the government's almost got this rather bizarre um, role that they're taking on where they can manage the numbers coming in. They can control which borders are going to open first and when, and that'll, that'll have an impact on the, sort, the numbers of visitors in the country. Um, but at the same time, you know, it does put um, the, there is investment that's needed in the country around, you know, facilities to accommodate, you know, camping grounds and, you know, just some of the local towns that were just getting overrun. They, they need to, to put investment into making sure that they can um, support tourists into the future. Uh, a lot of great work was being done environmentally, and then I think that will continue. That's just going to march ahead, which is, which is great. New Zealand's clean and green and beautiful, and, and long may that continue. So, yeah, it's, um, there, were, there was a groundswell kind of happening. Um, People do talk about this whole reimagining the industry. I'm not quite sure it's going to be, you know, I don't think we come out and look at something completely different. I think there will be changes on the edges, which will be better. Um, but, you know, it's fundamentally, I think mean, people are still going to travel and around the same, you know, path through New Zealand. I think that's going to happen. So there'll be some good changes there that I, I would hope. And I guess a lot of people talk around this period of time just being an escalation of what was probably coming anyway um, or probably needing needing to come. So, you know, generally a lot of those things are, are the good things that maybe, um, you know, the industry maybe always knew that it needed to get right or needed to work on or needed to invest some time and effort and some money into. So, you know, if, if anything, you know, that's escalated a little bit and, and we'll see what was always going to come in, in New Zealand and other areas as well, um, but maybe just a little bit quicker, um, yeah. you know, which, which hopefully is just a good thing for, for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. So um, it'll be, it will be different, um, but there'll be some good things as well. You know, it's going to get a whole lot of Australians coming to the country that have, 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 have wanted to push New Zealand off to later on in life, you know, and uh, I think we're going to need a lot of those that have, because there's one place to go for a period of time, we'll go and experience New Zealand. And that's going to be a good thing. If you, this just came to me, but if you were thinking about, say, a customer that was generally going to be looking for that later on in life, you know, motorhome, self-drive around New Zealand and it's been forced upon them. I guess you could say is probably a better word than that, but you know, they're, they're so itching to get somewhere and New Zealand's now on the, on the radar. What are, what are the, what's the type of traveler going to look like or what, what, you know, what should they be considering or what should they be thinking of, you know, as, as a product that New Zealand actually can offer to a, to a, you know, 20 something, 30 something, 40 something intrepid, you know, adventure, you know, or luxury, you know, traveler that may not necessarily fit that, that cliche of, you know, I'll get there when I've, when I've done everything else and, and then I'll go and grab a motorhome and cruise around. Yeah. I mean, New Zealand can cater for the cliche, you know, the adventure capital of the world and, you know, those motorhome drives, but it can also deliver um, just remoteness, uh, exploring forests up in the Northland region, um, you know, it can include just, just exploring countryside. The Kiwis get to go and, you know, roam in. Um, there's so many beautiful parts of the coastline that are not often 
thought about, you know, down in the Dunedin, um, you know, the Southland region. We're seeing lots of Kiwis at the moment through our domestic work, you know, taking holidays into Stewart Island, um, which is just a, a beautiful part of the country that, that can often be kind of not, not, not considered as often as it might be. Um, the beautiful ragged west coast, uh, you know, the, the, the film scene and the cultural scene in Wellington, you know, the beautiful harbour in Auckland and the, you know, everything that the city has to offer in Auckland and the, the bush and the beach around that, that, that incredible part of the country. So, um, I hope that doesn't sound cliche and, and, it, and it's sort of an answer on its own, but there is um, everything to do there uh, that, that people... Um, want to go and explore, explore the history of New Zealand, um, incredible culture that, that New Zealand has, uh, and just a hugely um, welcoming um, country. Uh, yeah. And I know it's been a couple of years since you've uh, booked, a, booked a bit of travel yourself or, you know, since the paper ticketing days and running tickets around around the, uh, around the streets. But if you, were, if you were an agent, you know, right now and you're an advisor and and you were wanting to get ready for this this bubble um and and get your your customers over to new zealand and and explore all those things that you were just talking about you know what's what's your advice to them what what would you be doing right now to get get ready for that uh talking to your customers uh would be one thing so if you're a travel agent that's got a database uh, of customers that you normally talk to you know now's the time to be talking to them Uh, i remember the start of all this it was the, um, you know, is it too soon to start talking about travel again? You know? But I think we're all past that. Um, we see a lot of inquiry coming through now. So, you know, we think that if you're a travel agent, now's the time to start, you know, sharing stuff through your social channels. Um, you know, conducting a, a Zoom session and, and talking about some upcoming future travel opportunities. It might be in New Zealand, but it also might be in Australia. So, you know, travels, you know, I I overhear people in cafes and around town, you just hear people talking about the desire to get out and explore where they're going to go first, what's it going to look like. Um, So it's, you know, it's it's an industry that is, it's under the spotlight, you know, so incredibly. Um, you You look at the... In any of the news media, um, and you, you're going to see travel in there in some capacity. When's the border opening up? When's the bubble opening up? What's you know what's the travel going to look like? So, travel agents are you know are going to just be that, that source of information that people can come to, which is which is fabulous because travel agents and um, and I firmly believe in the future of travel agents. You can provide that help and that guidance um, far more than an OTA can, right? So, you know, you're going to be able to give that information to your network and through your community um, far better than you know, an international OTA can. So get involved and, and make it happen now. Yeah, my nine-year-old at dinner last night said the same thing. She's like, once the borders open, Daddy, you're going to be so busy. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, you still don't really understand what I do, but that's okay. Um, you know, even she could get the concept that, you know, people really wanted to start traveling as soon as they possibly can. Um, and obviously they're asking us where, where we're going as a family too. So, um, you know, it's, it is going to be the conversation, the hot topic um, over the next you know, few weeks that it already is. Um, so making sure that you as an agent can be that source of inspiration and, and get in front of your customers, but not just with a post on social media, but actually picking up the phone and, and chatting to them and finding out, you know, what they're interested in and, and how they, they would see themselves doing New Zealand or, you know, or Australia and, and maybe, you know, discussing, you know, or breaking some of those myths or some of those cliches, maybe if they, they are thinking that, oh, oh, you know, I'd like to go to New Zealand, but we're going to do that later. We really want this type of holiday. You know, if an agent really maybe took some time to understand a little bit more about some of those alternate ways of seeing, you know, these destinations like New Zealand, then maybe they could have that conversation with the customer and say, hey, actually, you know, there are some amazing wineries and, and there's some really great luxury properties and lodges and so forth in New Zealand if, if somebody was, you know, um, yeah, that, that way inclined to travel normally. Exactly. And, you know, travel agents, I know, you know, have been 
while Saturday National Borders are long haulers shut off and they are on the, you know, the big ticket cruise holidays and the big European holiday, um, those big commissionable items are kind of off the table for the time being. Um, we at Anscro are working really hard on helping travel agents think about how do they, you know, in some way, you know, bring in some income, bring in some bookings um, that can also, you know, be a, a, you know, a healthy um, value of, of a sale, you know. Um, it's not just selling a hotel room or a flight, you know, there's so much you can package up at, in a New Zealand holiday, which uh, will not only bring income back into your business, but it's going to provide a much richer uh, value-added experience for your customers as well. You can demonstrate to them that, hey, here's uh, this incredible New Zealand package I've put together for you. Um, really show the value of a, of a travel agent. Yeah, absolutely. And I think we've, we've got some links and stuff that we can add um, to this post so that the agents can jump on the Anscrow side and, and see all of the um, bits and pieces that they can start learning if, they, if they're not super versed in, in you know, New Zealand and, and what it's got to offer. And they can obviously drop that right product in front of that right customer um, to get them inspired about you know, making some, some bookings and taking the confidence to actually get moving and, and you know, get on over there and explore it a little bit more. Just on a, a, I guess, a, a personal note, you know, through this time and just to lighten up the mood a little bit, how's, um, how's your own personal achievements been through this period? Have you picked up a new hobby? Are you now, uh, you know, got three different languages or what have, what have you been? I mean, I'm sure you've been busy, but if you had found any time, have you, have you done anything interesting? It's, uh, it's, it's been, oh, look, I, I it's been all consuming actually, Josh, just making sure that we get through this and as a company out the other side. Um, you know, I wish I could say that, you know, my, my musical skills are increased or anything like that. But, you know, for a while there, we had this window where I was able to go and walk every day and things felt a lot calmer and, and uh, had a bit more space just to think through things. Um, that time's kind of gone now. So, um, it's things just seem busier, the streets are busier, um, you know, this normality seems to have returned uh, in many respects. Um, so I'll, I'll look back and I'll go, did I really make the most of uh, isolation time? Um, I, yeah, I think I, it's been fascinating mate, to, to have actually kind of gone through it like, you know, you have and we all have to kind of watch this unravel before our eyes. And it's like, you know, because we, we, as a company, go through these things, you know, earthquakes and road closures and floods and volcanoes and bushfires. And actually, it's it's like, um, it feels almost like a full year of just, just noise and chaos and change and disruption. Um, even back to Thomas Cook, right, last year. Last September, things like that started to happen and all these changes started to you know, unravel around the industry. I've kind of been, you know, participating in that and, and adapting and making sure that our business is riding through those, those changes. And New Zealand, probably more than any, have been affected, you know, a lot over the last year, 18 months, two years, going back to Christchurch, earthquakes, you know, it's kind of almost been one thing after another um, yeah. for, for you guys. It's uh, it's probably almost like, you know, the reason why New Zealand's done so well, moved so quickly, did what they needed to do to get things done, and probably because of all of that leading up to that point that, you know, you guys were going to be the experts at, if, if anybody, um, on how to deal with, with disasters and change and, and, and things like this. I, I walk into the Riz team and it's like, you know, what what crisis are they dealing with now, you know? And they're just, they're just superstars at being able to just you know, know which area they're going to fix first. You look at the customer sort of, communicate with the agent, deal with the property, you know, rearrange itineraries. So um, it's become a bit of a machine in here as to how to deal with, with issues that take place in, in, in travel and tourism. Um, you know, hopefully after this one, there's a bit of a breathing space for, a gap. for everyone, but I don't know. 
Yeah. Who 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 knows? Who bloody knows what's what's next around the corner? Hopefully, um, at least there'll be the travel, you know, and people yeah. can get out and about and explore this this great uh, this great world of ours. And you know, obviously places like New Zealand and, and obviously Australia, we, you know, we all we all uh, see an opportunity to to explore it and get out and see some stuff that maybe we weren't going to or wasn't on the list right now. Um, but you know, hopefully this the bubble and everything that happens, we can get moving and, and um, you know, get travelling again. Yeah, and that's right. It, the travel will happen again. And, you know, just really uh, just to give some positivity and some encouragement to travel agents who might be thinking, when are, you know, when's the next booking going to come in? It's been months. Um, you know, just the fact we have started to see that in New Zealand is a really positive sign. And I think once we get dates from, you know, governments, the business will start to flow back into the travel agent world and into the industry. Um, so we've got to get there soon. But, um, you know, I think we're, I think we're, we're closer to the end of this than, than the start. Um, so, yeah, just keep, uh, keep preparing and learning and planning and thinking about selling, you know, the next holiday, wherever it might be, because um, it's going to happen and, you know, through travel agents. So it's going to be. That's what we hope. Yeah. Nick, a uh, huge amount of value being given to us today. Um, and I really appreciate you giving up some of your time. No doubt, super, super busy and, and got lots going on at the moment, um, getting ready um, and obviously deep in, in some stuff already, which is great to hear. Uh, just before we let you go, um, if you've got a couple of nominations or anyone that you can think of that may also want to jump on, share their story and add some value to the group, that would be that would be really great. Yeah, good, mate. Yeah, so a couple of good characters that I'd, I'd nominate that would have a good chat. Uh, one is Dennis Bunnock. I think would offer a huge amount of value in being able to talk to travel agents. He runs a tour operating company, family company, uh, and also from the Cato perspective. So he's the chairman of the land touring sector here in Australia. And uh, he's an avid uh, airline guy. He, um, he's an airline uh, aficionado. So he'd be great to get on. And the other one would be uh, Campbell Harris, who's the uh, chief executive and founder of Global Journeys, which is an OTA. And uh, maybe some of the tour operating um, uh, participants on this call might know who, who Campbell is. Uh, good man, uh, lots of opinions about the industry. Uh, yeah, both those guys would be good to have around. Yeah, and I think uh, we all saw Dennis's uh, little YouTube viral uh, video around cancellations and, and credits and so forth. And, you know, it was so, so well done and, and articulated. And I think a lot of people really valued um, him contributing that way and being, being able to share that video amongst their own communities and, and so forth to allow people to understand what, what we're all kind of going through and, and what it all means. So, you know, that'd be great if Dennis had some time and obviously Campbell as well. I'm sure he could add some value. So we'll tag them into the post and, and see if they can jump on and, and share their story. Um, but again, mate, thank you. Uh, it's, it's been really good. It's been great to meet you and, and find out about your story and, and what's been happening in the last few months. And, and we wish Ansgro all the best um, through through this next few months and this next period. Um, and hopefully we get uh, a ton of Aussies over there to, to check out what's uh, what's happening on the other side of the ditch. Thanks, Josh. No worries, Appreciate mate. All right. Pleasure. Talk soon. See ya. Bye.